Good morning, afternoon, or evening. Welcome to Spooky. I'm talking waffles. I'm your host, Ileana. And just for your amusement, I do like put my hands in there and kind of like wiggle them when I go spooky. Uh, just thought you should know that. So this is still spooky season. So of course today we're going to be talking about more spooky things, which will of course include my spooky story as well as other people's spooky stories. So that's going to be super cool. I'm really excited about it. Before we jump into the spooky stories, I wanted to note that the trees, the leaves, it's all beautiful. Like just suddenly overnight, everything is like changed color. Like gradually some of the leaves were changing, but then suddenly like yesterday, open the blinds and whoop, every single tree has changed now. So it's a very beautiful sight and I just love it so much. But on the downside, it's been getting darker way earlier every single day. So I think it's dark at like seven now. So I get really confused because it's dark and I'm like, oh, it's almost time for bed. And then I look and it's seven. I'm like, oh no. So that's coming up. It's going to get dark at like 5 p.m. eventually. And it's the worst time of the year, which is strange because like I love the fall. I love everything about it, but it's so like short lived because fall is like two months maybe long and then suddenly the winter comes and it's dark and cold and just ugh. so preparing myself for that but looking forward to what fall time has gonna get like make a pumpkin pie and make some butternut squash soup go for a walk and like crunch the leaves beneath my feet and just have like a great time i'm really excited about it i tomorrow well i guess when this episode comes out today is canadian thanksgiving so not really going home or doing anything like that but my boyfriend and I did get a very small turkey and some gravy and some little potatoes we tried to get stuff in but it was sold out everywhere like we looked and so no stuff in maybe we'll try and make some like homemade stuff in or something if we have the ingredients like in the pantry but yeah we're gonna have a little Thanksgiving and have the leftovers probably for like the rest of the week because although it's a small turkey it's still a lot of turkey for two people so it's pretty cool but yeah, that's pretty much the update in the land of Ileana and what's going on. Not too much. Um, yeah, but playing a lot of Animal Crossing. I'm trying to like redo my whole island's layout to make it the way I want it to. And it takes a very long time because I'm basically getting rid of like all the hills and stuff, making it flat and then putting the hills and stuff on the part where it was originally flat. So it's a bit tedious, but I don't mind. It's kind of fun to do. But yeah, so... With all of that out of the way, let's dive into today's spooky story. So last week we talked about a paranormal kind of spooky story where I talked about Harold, the ghost that haunted my family. And a couple nights ago, I was like, what should I do for this episode? And I kind of had the idea that we talk about a real life experience that I have as somebody with OCD because it's a spooky thing. Like, it's a spooky reality that so many people live with, like, OCD or anything else um, in that realm. And I'm like, you know what? I think it's a pretty spooky story in a way. Like, there's so many different ways that someone can understand and, like, interpret the word spooky. So, for this theme, I want to touch on, like, the different ways that people can understand spooky. So, last week, we did, like, the paranormal version. This week, I want to talk about real life experiences that many people around the world face. So for people who don't know, OCD stands for obsession compulsive disorder, which is basically a type of anxiety disorder that's characterized by like intrusive and frequent obsessions and repetitive and ritualistic behaviors. So a lot of people when they think about it, they think it's just like lining up pencils or like like in certain colors done in a sort certain order, but there is way more to it. So a description that I found from the mentalhealthfoundation.org says, individuals with OCD can describe feeling driven to do things with an irresistible urge in order to relieve stress and feel better. For those with this condition, ignoring these urges is not easy. And if they can manage, the urge will come back again later. For those with a fear of being infected by germs, which is what this story is going to be about. It can be common to adopt a hand washing ritual that results in chapter sore skin. And the condition is often accompanied by shame or feelings of embarrassment related to symptoms of the condition. So it's interesting because this actually affects males and females equally. And it affects about 2% of people at some point during their lives. 
oftentimes people can actually confuse OCD with like being a perfectionist, but it's actually a very difficult to live with condition that can impact people's work, relationships, and school, um, and even their personal lives. So that's a little description just in case like there are any misconceptions or anything around it. Just so this story makes a lot more sense and so you can kind of understand what makes it so spooky. So my story is about what I have dubbed the poison obsession. Now, mind you, I was very young when this happened. So when I look back at it, I actually think it's a really funny story. But anytime I tell people, they're like, what the heck is wrong with you? Um, so I thought that this makes a lot of sense to be put in a spooky story because you can see how it affects people of all ages and the kind of stuff that kind of happens to you if you have this condition or if you have friends with this condition. So the poison obsession, which makes me laugh. Um, I don't know why it makes me laugh. Maybe there's something messed up in my brain, who knows? Anyways, so this is the story about the poison obsession. The poison obsession is what I call this story, but essentially when I was, I wanna say like eight or nine, maybe 10, somewhere around that age range, I had this bizarre fear that came out of nowhere that I was poison. My hands were poison and dirty. If I was to touch anything, I, I, I would like become dead, basically. It was like the best way that I can try to explain my thought process on this. And so I refused to touch my face, which I mean, kind of thanked me in the long run because I didn't really get acne until I was a lot older and because I started touching my face. So this kind of probably helped with my nice clear skin I had as a kid, but I refused to touch my face or any part of me because I was scared that I would get poison on me. So you're probably wondering like, okay, but how did you eat, right? Well, I ate everything with forks because I thought that because my hands were poison, if I was to touch, let's say a cookie and eat that cookie, because my hands had touched the cookie, they the cookie has become infected and had become poison. And so if I ate the cookie, then I would die. So I would use forks to eat it. And I even got my like, little sister on board by calling it the forks game because as I mentioned in the description it's kind of a weird like thin that you don't want people really to know like you don't want people to know that you think that you're made of poison right so that's kind of a spooky aspect of it Ooh. and so I would always eat with forks no matter what because I refused to touch anything poison even though I wasn't actually made of poison but I thought I was and that's what's so scary about it so I one of my like chores I had grown up was cleaning the bathrooms my family, we had three bathrooms. We had one in the downstairs, one in the second floor, and one in the third floor. So every single week, I would clean those bathrooms. And it was the bane of my existence. Not because I don't like cleaning bath, not because I hate cleaning bathrooms, but because bathrooms involve a lot of poisonous chemicals. And so as soon as I go to like reach for like, like Windex or something, or like that toilet scrub, and you see like that skull and crossbones, like, it literally made me sweat and I was so terrified I would wear what I would call my poison clothes and my poison clothes were basically like this weird pink skirt and this like tie-dyed short sleeve shirt no it was long sleeve sorry it was long sleeve because I didn't want poison to touch my skin the skirt I don't know why it was a skirt I feel like it would make more sense if I wore the pants because I didn't want the poison to touch me but this was the one outfit I would use to clean the bathrooms because I refused to get poison on me. And so obviously after I was done cleaning the bathrooms, I got throw it in the wash and then I would still think that it was poison. So I'd never touch it. I would leave it where it was until it was time to change into those to go clean the bathroom again. So that was how I kind of got around like poison, depoisifying my clothes, if that makes sense. And so I would clean the bathrooms and I would be scared to death every single time. Like I would have to take breaks to like catch my breath or like calm myself down because Poor Ileana thought she was made of poison and touching all of this poison stuff really freaked her out. So I was my own worst nightmare, essentially. Again, spooky. And so that was a problem. And then the worst part, this is the part that was always the worst part of thinking I was made of poison is that after I was done cleaning, I would take a massive shower and I would scrub, scrub, scrub so hard that like my skin would like bleed. And I'm not kidding, like it would bleed. And even after the shower, if I touch something, it could be like a doorknob or a wall. Like if I thought it was dirty, like that was another thing. It was dirt and it was also that I was made of poison. So I would wash my hands so, so much that it literally, they would crack and bleed and they would burn all the time. And even up on my arms, cause like I would wear the 
the rubber gloves to clean and so because those touch poison they touch my skin and my skin was poisoned I had to really really scrub so basically my hands up to my arms completely dry bleeding gross and yucky and always in pain because I thought I was made of poison and this went on for a really long time there were other things that I thought were poison for some reason we had these decorative hats hung on our bathroom doors and they would always fall off and I hated this because anytime they would fall off obviously we'd be told to put the hats back on and I was terrified because I had convinced myself that these decorative hats were poison and so I would do everything that I could to not be the person to see the fallen hat because I didn't want to pick it up and like hang it on the door but sometimes it was me who knocked it over because I'd be cleaning the bathroom so I would get like some toilet paper and I'd like wrap it around where my hand was in the hat and I'd put the hat back up and we also had like this wired broom decoration thing that was on one of the other bathrooms and honestly okay the reason I thought this one was poison was because my oldest brother told me it was I remember he was like yeah you don't want to touch that broom or you get poisoned and die so I wonder if he is the reason why I started to think everything was poison. Honestly, I have no idea. But yeah, that broom that we used to have hung on the thin, I thought it was poisonous. And anytime it would fall, I'd be like freaking out. I'd be like, oh no, I can't touch this. Like, I don't want to touch it. I'm going to like die. It's going to be poison. I remember another time I was cleaning my bedroom, which is a very rare occasion for younger Ileanas. I clean my room now though, because I don't have as much random stuff as I did as a kid. Um... And there was this like spider that had jumped out, landed on my arm and jumped away. And I was so, so scared. I remember like crying and freaking out. And then I calmed myself down. And I remember I go downstairs and I, um, I go up to my dad and I'm like, hey, are spiders poisonous? And he was like, um, some of them. And I'm like, are those ones in Canada? And he was like, yeah. And I'm like, oh. And so I remember <laughs> like, I thought I was gonna die that night because the spider touched me and so I like scrubbed my hands and like my arms again to the point of like bleeding and I was like hopefully that does it and that the spider doesn't kill me and then there was another time when I was cleaning the bathrooms when the washcloth I was using had accidentally like sprayed a little bit like I was like scrubbing the sink and a bit of the water came back and it landed directly on my tongue and at that moment, I honestly thought I was going to die. Like, I started spitting, like, rinsing my mouth out with mouthwash and water. And, like, I was so scared that I was actually going to die because that tiny little bit of dirt touched my tongue that I wrote my will. And I remember I was going to give all of my toys to my little sisters. Um, Yeah, and I think I was going to give all my clothes. I don't remember that part. I only remember, like, having the will to give, like, all of my toys to my siblings and they could divide it equally and they'd have to take care of them all because a little bit of yuckiness touched my tongue. So those are some of the very strange aspects of my poison obsession. And I honestly like, although I never like, like I knew that it wasn't normal, but I thought that other people also had poison obsessions. So eventually I came to terms that I was not made of poison, which was pretty good. And I went off to like a little camp, a little summer camp. And this is when I like, I remember I was like talking to some of my tent mates and I was like, yeah, so how old were you guys when you had your poison obsession? And they were like, what are you talking about? And then I'm like, you know, where you thought like everything was made of poison, like you'd wash your hands all the time. They're like, Eliana, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I'm like, what? And that's when I realized not everybody in the world has a poison obsession. Um, so that was really embarrassing. Like whenever I think back to it, I'm like, I want to hit my head against the wall. Cause I'm like, why did I ask someone, how old were you when you had your poison obsession? Um, it was very strange. It was a very strange time, but yeah, that's like the main part of my poison obsession. Like I was obsessed with making sure that I was clean and not feeling dirty and all of that stuff and when you think about it I think it's pretty scary like to the point of convincing yourself that you are made of poison you'll die if you don't wash your hands like to the point where poor little Liliana's hands were cracking and bleeding and I was in so much pain my skin hurt all the time and I would shower all the time and like just try and be as clean as possible and then eventually I discovered like hand lotion and oh boy, did that hurt at the beginning. But yeah, wanted to shine a light on 
Some people have internal horrors. Some people have paranormal ones. Some people have random people who like attack them and become their own those people become those people's nightmares like there's so many different aspects of spooky and horror that i'm like you know what that's this episode's about in terms of ocd as an adult i do have a couple of strange rituals that i do but they're nothing like washing my hands to the point of bleeding it's just like i can't spin around in a circle without spinning around the other way and i have to like touch the door handle and lock three times before I go to bed and I need to like tilt my cups and like shake them three times and then like I can drink out of it but that's about it and I mean I would take that over the poison obsession that I had as a child any day so yeah that's my my poison obsession story uh if you ever had a poison obsession (laughs) as I call them Let me know about it if you're okay sharing it. I am very fascinated in hearing that. It's a pretty scary thing to live with, not gonna lie, because like it really feels like you're gonna die if you don't do these rituals, if you don't do like washing your hands or if you don't follow along with these random things that don't really make any any sense even to yourself. So being a human is scary, you know? So that's my story. And so let's share... Let's do two stories today, um, two horror stories from people who are not me, Ileana. <laughs> All right, so this story is from someone whose username is Mom Says I'm Pretty, and they say, I was about four or five years old and my parents had just separated. My mom was living in a two-bedroom apartment. I had my own room, but I preferred to sleep in her bed whenever I was staying with her. Our two bedrooms were at the end of the hallway, directly across from each other. Our apartment was on the first floor, and I remember that it was in the middle of the summer and my mom had the window open in her room, which was directly behind the bed above the headboard. Anyways, I woke up in the middle of the night and remember sitting up and seeing that our cat was sitting in the doorframe of my mom's room. Her door was open and you could partially see into my bedroom. This was strange because our cat was typically always in bed with us. I was was watching him, he walked into my bedroom and meowed. I turned to face my mom and wake her up. In the three to four seconds it took her to wake her up and ask me what was wrong, we both looked back up in the doorframe and there was a man standing by my open door, making his way out of the bedroom. I still don't know how she managed to do it so quickly, but my mom proceeded to pick me up and literally throw me out of the screen window. Again, we were on the first floor and it was maybe a three foot drop to the floor. She quickly followed and we were able to start screaming for help and someone called 911. The police came but didn't see any signs of forced entry, only that our front door was unlocked, which led them to believe that the man must have exited that way. The strange thing was that my mom swore up and down that she had locked the door that night, with a deadbolt and a chain lock. About a week later, she was cleaning the kitchen and opened up our water heater closet and found a notebook with names in drawings, as well as a pair of gloves and some gum wrappers. The police were called again, but all they could do was speculate that the man had been in their house and hid until we were asleep. So this person's name is Ragin underscore butthole. Went to an abandoned hospital. There was a large square suitcase spiraling on the roof on the outside of the building. Locked steel door at the bottom, so the only way was to climb on the outside up to the first landing. My buddy boosts me up. I climb over it, and there's a sleeping bag with a steak knife next to it on the landing. I call down... Uh, we're definitely not alone here, dude. No, but it's cool, says a voice behind me, scaring me and causing me to jump and whirl around. There's a young, dirty, homeless-looking guy standing there, coming down the stairs from above, hands up, palms out. Didn't mean to scare you, he says, taking a seat on the stairs, so I carefully step up on the handle of the steak knife, lean over the edge, and pull my friend up. We had planned to sit on the roof and drink beer, so we offer... So we offer the homeless guy a beer, which he gratefully accepts. And we're talking on the landing for a while, talking about the city, the cops, traveling, life in general. He's basically a drifter, been in town for a week or so, but a nice guy. Things are going pretty well. Then he asks, you guys are human, right? And I'm like, uh, and he goes, I hate it when I meet people that end up being aliens and you never know until you peel their skin off. They've been after me a long time, you know, they don't stop. They never stop. Sometimes I think I should just kill everyone to be safe. He's definitely not joking, and there's a comfortable silence as my friend and I realize this guy is very messed up. Yeah, man, I say. 
we're human. We just wanted to check out the place and drink some beer. We're gonna go ahead and move on now. We definitely don't want any trouble. He just sat there in silence, so we leave him the last beer, carefully going up the rail and jump down and walk away very quickly, constantly looking back over our shoulders the entire time he's standing there, still and silent, watching us leave. That place is still abandoned. Five years later and we've never been back. I'm not a believer in the supernatural, but humans can be deceptive in dangerous ways you can't see coming. And I know I said two, but a three is my favorite number. So from... I can't even pronounce this person's name. I'm sorry. Vapors Synthro Chill says, A group of my friends and I explored an abandoned asylum slash mental hospital a couple of years in OKC Metro. Very safe at night for silly college freshmen like ourselves. The first experience we had was all of us taking our merry time, enjoying the darkness, and just being people. You have to come in through a broken window, and we all gathered at the window just being dumb when we hear loud echoing footsteps down the hall running towards us we all did that who the heck is here who's messing with us look and turn around after realizing we're all present and none of us were sprinting down a dark abandoned hallway we booted out of there the second time we hear a group of people messing with us jumping from around the corners and such but then they never get too close we assumed it was an animal at first but we got brave and realized it was a person we managed to catch them and after staring at a collection of seemingly drugged up 20-somethings who begged us for cans of paint and cigarettes, we got some not-so-good vibes and tried to leave. The leader of the haunted asylum croonies asked if we had any jewelry, which we denied. He then said the creepiest thing I've ever heard in my life. I like jewelry. I take it off of girls here when they sleep. We bolted. Ugh, that's creepy. Yikes. Yeah, so obviously following in that theme, I wanted real life stories, not paranormal stories, which to some people, of course, are real life stories, but you kind of get the whole theme I'm going with here. So, all right, so it is the moment you've all been waiting for. That's right, it's the fun fact of the day. So today's fun fact is, dun da da The jack-o'-lantern comes from the Irish legend of Stingy Jack. Legend has it that Stingy Jack invited the devil to have a drink with him, but Jack didn't want to pay for the drink, so he convinced the devil to turn himself into a coin instead of buying the drink. He pocketed the coin and kept it close to a silver cross in his house, preventing the devil from taking shape again. He promised to let the devil go as long as he would leave Jack alone for a year, and that if Jack died, the devil wouldn't claim his soul. After a year, Jack tricked the devil again to leave him alone and not claim his soul. When Jack died, God didn't want such a conniving person in heaven, and the devil, true to his word, would not allow him into hell. Jack sent off into the night with only a burning coal to light his path. He placed the coal inside a carved-out turnip and had been roaming the earth ever since. People in Ireland and Scotland began creating their own creations of Jack's lanterns out of turnips, beets, and potatoes. The the tradition traveled to the United States, a lot of the immigrants, and people began to use pumpkins native to North America for lanterns instead. That one's kind of cool. I like that story. All right. So with that, I'm going to bid you a great rest of your morning, great rest of your evening, great rest of your night, great rest of your apocalypse, and great rest of spooky season. Okay, bye!